Hello and welcome to the tutorial on linear regression. This series is going to have probably three to four parts in it. The first part or the first video is going to be focusing on basic linear regression. The second part is going to be focusing on multiple linear regression and depending on whether I split the third part into two parts the third part will be focusing on how to use linear or multiple linear regression to find a mediation effect and the fourth part will be focusing on how to find and confirm moderation effects using multiple linear regression okay so if you want to focus on any of those specific parts go to that video or that tutorial Okay, so starting with basic linear regression. Linear regression can be considered as a step up after correlation. A correlation attempts to find a relationship between two variables, while linear regression attempts to find the direction that that relationship exists in. Linear regression is used when we want to predict the value of a variable based on the value of another variable. The variable that we want to predict is called the dependent variable or also the outcome variable because it is the outcome of what we're trying to predict and the variable we are using to predict the other variable's value is called the independent variable or sometimes the predictor variable. So to just go over some assumptions quickly, there are two primary assumptions. There are secondary assumptions, but the two primary ones that are most important is that firstly there needs to be a linear relationship between the two variables. A linear relationship is when two variables match up to form somewhat of a straight line, and depending on the straightness of that line and the slope of that line, it, it dictates the strength of the relationship between those two variables. So. Whilst there are a number of ways to check whether a linear relationship exists between your two variables, it's suggested that you create a scatter plot using SPSS where you can plot the dependent variable against your independent variable and then visually inspect the scatter plot to check for linearity. And the second assumption is has to got to do with residuals. So this means that you need to check that the residuals, also known as the error, of the regression line are approximately normally distributed. Well, my preferred way of checking whether the residuals are approximately normally distributed is to use a normal PP plot and I'll discuss that during the example. When you, con when you are conducting any type of relationship testing such as correlations or regression, your data needs to be paired. So what this means is that each data set has the same number of data points and that each data point in one data set is related to one and only one data point in the other data sets. Additionally, for linear regression, the data pair or well the paired data should also be collected from two independent measures. This means that for example, the second datum in each pair should not be created by mathematically manipulating the first datum in each pair in any way nor should they be two measures of the same thing. If the first datum and the second datum in each pair are not, independent, are not independently derived, you'll almost certainly find a strong relationship between them, but that relationship may not correspond to any relationship in the real world. So, it's, in other words, it's quite pointless to do. Okay, so now let's move on to actually doing some analysis. Okay, moving on with the analysis. In this data set, I have two multivariate variables. Multivariate means that they're just in two different columns. And the first variable is brain weight, which is our outcome variable. And the second variable is body weight, which is the predictor variable. And this data is paired in that each um, datum of brain weight is specifically and only related to the datum of body weight that it's paired up with. So we have different body weights of the of different mammals as well as that that specific mammal's corresponding brain weight. 
So in order to progress with a basic linear regression, in basic linear regression you only have two continuous variables. We need to test the assumptions. So the first assumption is linearity. Yeah, the best way to test the assumption of linearity is to create a scatter plot. Okay, so just go to legacy dialogs, scatter dots, simple scatter is fine. And then as the y axis is the criterion or the dependent variable, that would be brain weight. And because that's, we're trying to determine if body weight can predict the outcome of brain weight. So therefore body weight would be our x axis and independent variable. And then we can just click OK. We can see that there are two outliers here. That's probably a, a whale's brain or something. But if you take these two outliers away, we could see that there's definitely a, a linear relationship here. Even including the outliers, it follows that same overall relationship. As x increases, y increases as well. That tells us that or at least speculatively, that as the body weight increases for an animal, so too would their brain weight increase. Okay, so that's assumption one, linearity checked. The next one is a little bit more complicated, I suppose. That's checking for the normality of the residuals. So in order to calculate the residuals, we would first have to pr pretty much perform a linear regression dependent variable is again the brain weight because that variable depends on the body weight. However, instead of going through and interpreting the, the model that we generate now, we just kind of want to save the residuals. Or we want to save the predicted values in standardized format as well as the residuals in standardized format. And we can just click OK and OK. So we're not really interested in this model at the moment, but we will come back to it. What we are really interested in is the predicted variables, or the predicted outcome variables, as well as the residuals of that predicted outcome. So then we'll just do the same thing again here. Okay, so once we have our predicted standardized scores and our residual scores, we can just um, generate a PP plot with the standardized standardized predicted residuals or the standardized predicted scores <clears throat> and the standardized residuals on a normal distribution and everything else is pretty default there it's good so it they generates around four different graphs but we're really only looking at this one the standardized predicted value and the normal PP plots of the standardized predicted value Okay, the other ones are not are not necessary to interpret this. The straight to the line of the data, of the paired data, or the normality, the better the normality of the residuals are. The straight line here is perfectly normal residuals, and these are the the errors basically. Residuals basically like an error from the predicted score that are generated, and we can see as it's not exactly following the, or not not even closely following the the normal distribution of the residuals, but it starts to pick up towards the end there. The higher your sample size, the less violations of the normality really matter because the law of large numbers, everything will equal out eventually. However, for this data set of 62, mm, we have to take it quite with a grain of salt, the results, I suppose. It may not be generalizable to data sets outside of the ones we've just collected. However, for this example, it should suffice. Okay, so let's go on to actually calculating our basic linear regression. So we just go to analyze regression and linear, put our dependent variable, brain weight, and our independent variable of body weight, we can have a look at the statistics that we want. Estimates, confident intervals are pretty good. Covariance matrix is also another test of whether the variables are linear. If they have a correlation between them, then that's obviously quite linear. 
And you can have descriptives as well. Part and partial correlation. Part and partial correlation show us how much these variables interlap with each other. And it, it's more important really for multiple regression rather than basic regression because as we're only working with two variables. And that goes with collinearity as well. Collinearity is something that you should try to avoid when working with multiple regression. Okay. You can click continue and click OK. Okay, so here we have our descriptive statistics. It's not really important right now, but it's useful for reporting in paper or whatever. Correlations, we can see that there's a quite a strong correlation between body weight and brain weight, 0.934. That's basically a almost perfect correlation. Don't really find those very much in the social sciences, but this is more of a natural science, I suppose. Brain weight and body weight. That just reaffirms our assumption that the that the variables are linear and allows us to kind of progress with the rest of the interpretation. We use an enter method because there's only two variables. Other methods such as stepwise, they kind of test the model sequentially and try to build the most statistically significant model based on the variables that you input. But we'll get more to that in the multiple linear regression side of things. Model summary, this shows the overall model or the overall fit of the model of the variables that we've interpreted or in inputted rather. So R, R isn't so important but what rather is important is R square and even more so adjusted R square. R square tells us of the overall variance that the predictive variable accounts for in the outcome variable. So we could say that body weight accounts for 87.1% of the total variance of the outcome variable which is brain weight. So 87% of all that accounts for brain weight is determined by the body weight of the animal. ANOVA, we can see that overall our model is statistically significant. And the coefficients here, this allows us to kind of build a almost a simple model. So w when you conduct a, a regression analysis, you're trying to find the line of best fit between two or more points of data. So that that line that goes through the data of a scatter plot is the line of best fit. And the formula to find this line of best fit is y equals a plus b times. So y obviously is the outcome variable which is the the brain weight and a is the intercept of this of the line which can be which is the constant value here that we see while a is the intercept which is the body weight and then the times is the the body weight unit itself so for example if we had a body weight of i don't know let's say 30 grams we would have the equation of brain weight equals negative 56.856 plus 0 0.903 plus 0 0.903 times 20. So 0 0.0903 times 20 plus negative 56.856 gives us a brain weight score. And then you can correspond that, that calculation to what you actually get and you, depending on the amount of standard error, it will depend or determine how far away that is from your actual score. And that is pretty much it for basic linear regression. And next we'll be moving on to multiple regression. Stay tuned.